the sophomore homecoming. David's bus. Tim got me invited, asked David if I could go. Didn't really want to. I mean, I missed freshman homecoming, didn't really mind, but uh, thought it would have been rude not to, since Tim invited me and since David went out of his way to let me go. I walk in wearing the suit I haven't worn in years. It's short, looks tight. Mom tried to buy me a new one, but uh, told her there was no sense, no point in buying a new suit for one time, $200. Everyone's talking, taking pictures. I don't know anyone besides Tim, but so he walks over and talks to me. Then David does, acts polite, but I know he doesn't really like me. I walk around. David's house is nice. That's when I see you. He had this kind of blue dress on with this wave-like pattern at the bottom of it. Your hair wasn't straight, but it wasn't curled. I forget what you girls call that. I'd seen you around school a couple of times, but this was the first time I really saw you. You're taking pictures with Anna and Katie. They had all this makeup caked on, but you just... you didn't. You only had a little. It was, it was perfect. And I just stared. I, I don't know if anyone noticed me. I know you didn't, but... Eventually I caught myself and walked away. Mike? All throughout the night, I caught myself looking at you. On the bus, at the dance. It wasn't like I was looking for you, it just... just happened. Mike? Tim kept pressuring me into dancing with you, but, uh... But I couldn't. I... Stay in bed! Please, stay in bed. Mike, what the hell are you doing? What are you trying to do? I was in the middle of a story, and I would appreciate it if I could finish! Also, one should be aware of what they publicly post on the internet. Second honeymoons are awesome. Got the house all to myself. Anybody want to come over for a movie night? Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Tim tried to get me to dance. There's no need to sit like that. Go ahead, lay down, grab the covers, relax. This is a long story. The night ends, we get back to David's house. Some of the guys stayed, but I, I didn't want to, so my mom got me. Say goodbye to everyone, and that was the last time I saw you for a while. And that is until Max's birthday two months later. Everyone's sitting around, watching TV. Some people are in the kitchen eating pizza. I'm on the couch next to Tim, and and you come up and sit next to me. Tim walks away. I, I got super nervous. But then we just talked. About school, lives, family, movies, everything. I mean, I'm usually awkward with girls, but it just clicked. Then you invite me on a tour of Max's backyard. We walk around and then we find ourselves in a chair by the pool. We just stared at each other. My heart was pounding. And you gently lean in and then we're kissing. Then I'm experiencing my first kiss. I didn't know what to do. My nerves turned to comfort and we just kissed more. I have someone that I truly, truly care about. Mike, I am so Be so patient. Sorry. We're almost at the end. And then there's this party that I can't go to. And you go and you get drunk for your first time. And you make out with Troy. You tell me he took advantage of you. While others say that you were all over him. But do you remember what I did? I forgave you. Please don't. Let me finish. And guess what I find out you did and guess who went? Mike, I am so sorry. I thought it was, it was a mistake. Oh, are you sorry? Which time were you sorry? The first time? The second? The third? The fourth? How about the fifth time? Are you sorry for the fifth time? 
Oh no, now come on, you said you were sorry. Now look me in the eyes and say, Mike, I am so sorry. The fifth time was my last time. After the fifth, I realized what I did. After the fifth, I realized how much I loved you. Don't hurt me, please. Have you ever wanted to kill yourself? I mean, have you ever walked up the stairs to your father's room, opened his closet, moved past the old baseball uniforms and the sweaters, and found the shoe box that he thinks is so well hidden, opened it up, pulled out the gun, loaded it, put it in your mouth, and tasted the metal, and thought of all the pain it would bring if you could just pull down, but then the relief. Oh, there would be no more hurt and anger, and you would finally be able to find some kind of peace. Have you ever wanted to kill someone? Have you ever only been able to think of one person constantly? so that you fantasize about them on their knees, screaming, covered in blood? Have you ever thought what would it would be like to make the person who made you suffer, suffer? To make them experience something of what you experienced? Ever felt the rush and the disgust Gust that comes with thinking such thoughts. Could you ever not decide which life to take, yours or hers? But I had an epiphany. I shouldn't have to decide. Your actions caused this. Your actions resulted in this. I forgot how comfy this bed was. Since it was your actions, it'll be your call. Take the knife. Take it. Come on. I'm giving you one minute. Either you slice open my throat, or after the minute's up, I'm gonna slice open yours. Mike, I'm so sorry. I know, I heard the last couple of times you said it. Don't make me. I'm not making you do anything. You don't have to do anything. It's your call. 40 seconds. Mike, please. I am so sorry. It was a huge mistake. Please don't do this. Don't make me do this. I'm really sorry. 30. Mike, please. I'm so, Mike, I am so, so sorry. It was such a big mistake. 20. I, Mike, I am so sorry. I was a huge mistake. Don't make me do this. Please don't do this to me. It was such a huge mistake, Mike. Please, I am so sorry. It was such a huge mistake. Ten. Mike, please. 